quick video about the basic Agisoft workflow. So I've opened it up. Go find some photos. So these are the Circ 1330 photos. I'll just shift click and select all of them and dump them in there. And great, they're all there. And I'm in the workspace right now. This shows that they're not aligned and this kind of shows the processes that you're following <clears throat> and the results of those processes. I will just get rid of this unused chunk, but it doesn't really matter. First thing I'm going to do is add the reference information from the CSV. So I'll go down to the reference tab. This is just a different way of looking at the data. I have not used this stuff down here too much because it's like using GPS points and whatnot. Uh, so I'll go to here, import reference, and I'm just going to grab the, the basic TXT file that came from NASA. So go to data, Maryland, Cirque. Okay, this is, I haven't done anything to this, so just open it up, see how it looks. So label is in column one, so that's good. Longitude, column two, latitude is three, altitude is four, yaw, pitch, roll. So that all looks good. Uh, and you do have two count, two rows of um, headers here. It's kind of messy. So you can, I think you can just import starting at row three. And hopefully all this garbage over there won't matter. I don't think it will. Okay, great. This stuff kind of updated. Now I'm going to check all these boxes. So I'll just click in there, hit control A to check out to select everything check everything. Now I would like to update the settings for accuracy. So camera accuracy, one meter, camera accuracy degree, one degree, and capture distance, three, three, three. That's it. Now I'd like to see where things are. So model, show, hide items, cameras, Great, and we, we are ready to run. So the workflow is just align photos, high accuracy, make sure that these things are checked in advance, uh, in the advanced area. And once you check this, it should change this to key point limit per megapixel of the camera 1000, which is something that made a big difference for doing this well. Um, and uh, this one just means that the program will work to uh, adapt to adjust all the different interior and exterior rotation parameters, uh, orientation parameters of the camera. So anyway, you don't need to know about it, you just need to check it. And then you'll click OK, and it will do its thing for not super long. But I already did this one. So now, like any good cooking show, I'll just take my finished product out of the oven. So now we've done a initial sparse point cloud. And so that's what you're seeing here, as well as the camera locations. Um, and I don't know the details on like what these little vectors actually indicate, um, but that might be good to know. So I'm gonna go back to turn things on and off here. Uh, where is that? show hide items, now get rid of the cameras, and now you can see this sparse point cloud, which is not is not so sparse even. Um, so it's good to go back to the workspace tab, and you can see almost 800,000 points and 670 out of 670 cameras aligned. So that's all good, that's what we're looking for. If you're not getting that, then we should we should talk about ways to deal with it. Um, so the next part in the workflow is just to build the dense cloud. Quality medium is fine. Depth filtering, you don't need to do anything. You just click OK. And this, this will take a while still. This could take a few hours and hog some resources. So 
may be good to do it overnight. Um, and then you, at, when you're done, you can just right click on the output, which is gonna be the dense point cloud, export it and make sure you save your project. And that is it.